Hello and welcome back and today I want to start a series of videos based around the idea of Wi-Fi. Don't get me wrong when it comes to network attached storage or indeed anything to do with networking LAN connections over RJ45 be they 1 GBE, 2.5 GBE, 5 GBE, 10 GBE or more will always be king. A standard cat or fiber connection will always outperform Wi-Fi but all too often you're left in a situation where maybe it's an old building, maybe there's a distance between you and the router or the modem, or maybe just simply you want to go wireless. One way or another, a number of you are curious about the utilization of storage devices in wireless only, utilizing Wi-Fi. And with the growth of the new Wi-Fi 6 connection, the 802.11ax connection, a number of you have been wondering about when NAS is going to jump on board with this, and I think pretty damn soon. But today's video is the first of many where I'm going to walk through the differences between standard Wi-Fi connectivity in the world of NAS and in the world of networking in general. My laptop here is around about two years old, and because I'm testing more and more Wi-Fi 6 equipment, I decided to upgrade it, because little did I know how easy it is to upgrade most modern laptops, and by modern I do mean the last four, maybe even five years, to Wi-Fi 6, and take advantage of this much, much faster and low energy consumption connection. So, in this video, what we're going to be doing is upgrading my laptop to Wi-Fi 6. And then I'm going to display some of the speeds that are possible over wireless connection. Now, before I go any further, it's worth touching on a few little provisos. First and foremost, there are other Wi-Fi uh, wi upgrades out there. And if you're going to do this, make sure you know your way around your PC. Because this utilizes an M2 connector inside this laptop that is currently being used for my current Wi-Fi uh, system in place, the adapter there that arrived, that the laptop arrived with. And by upgrading this, I am going to have to open this device up a little bit to get inside. Secondly, the speeds you're going to be getting with connection to a NAS are not going to be the same as the connections you have over Wi-Fi 6 and a Wi-Fi 6 router, such as the AI mesh there, the one there at the back, uh, the RTMX. What you get with those and the internet is a much faster connection than you will get with a NAS on your network because there's a certain amount of conflict. Now, there are ways to tinker with your connection. You can play with some of the bands, switch to just N rather than AC and all the different kinds of Wi-Fi settings you can go into and I'll show you some of them on the laptop before I go into the full installation. But for now, do bear that in mind that the speeds you're going to be seeing are obviously going to be lower than CAT6 and standard LAN connectivity with a cable, which generally will be around 100 megabytes. With Wi-Fi, you're looking at somewhere between 30 and 50 on a good day. Um, and what the hope is that we want to generate more than that number. So don't think by installing this that you would get a connection between you and your NAS that will break into the hundreds. You're gonna really have to tinker with your network and the right file types to do that. But without further ado, let's switch to the screen where I talk you through a little bit more about what I'm gonna to do today before I get my hands dirty. Now, on the screen here, you can see a link to an Amazon page and this Amazon adapter is the one we're going to be utilizing today, the Killer 650. It's an AX adapter that will require you to have an M2 connection in place. The laptop I'm using today is a Dell Windows 10 Pro laptop and I featured it on the channel enough that I'm sure you guys have already seen. I'm not going to bore you too much with the background specs of the laptop but of course you should always check compatibility before proceeding on this. So rather than consider my laptop, consider the dongle. Now I'm screen recording right now so that will take a little bit of a dent in the read and write speed so do bear that in mind. And the NAS we're going to be using today is a Synology Celeron powered NAS. I've already created a shared folder on the NAS, which is what we're going to be dis, uh, communicating with the NAS um, with. And on top of that, I've already mounted that shared folder as a network drive. So there's our network drive there, and that's what we're going to be utilizing. And the speed test will be performed with Blackmagic and AJA. Now, it is, you can do this later, but if you're going to install this dongle, uh, sorry, this Wi-Fi upgrade via M2 inside your laptop, I strongly recommend that you download the driver in advance and either, or either or, download the driver and install the driver 
which won't affect your existing driver. It will just add the available driver, which is kind of an set of instructions for your laptop to know what to do in the background, or download it and keep it in your downloads folder, or download it to a USB stick. Because remember, once you've upgraded the um, internet interface, the internet uh, adapter on your laptop, the network communication tool, I should say, once you've upgraded that, do bear in mind that there's no guarantees that your system will automatically be able to use it. So make sure you've got the driver in advance before you lose internet connectivity to get it later. You can go to the URL or I'm sure Google will be your friend. Now, here's my network adapter that I'm currently utilizing there, this Wi-Fi adapter here. And if we open up my devices, we can see the Intel dual band wireless driver right there. If we go into the properties and we go into some of the uh, the details here. Let's find the one I'm looking for. I think everyone has experience of playing with these tabs. So as you can see, everything here is set to default. Everything's standard. And once again, you don't have to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6. If you want to get better wireless speeds with your NAS, you can play with some of these settings, but do it at your own risk. So now we've got that all checked out. You've seen the, the, uh, the uh, wireless adapter that we've already got featured in this laptop. Why don't we do a very quick spin of Blackmagic and AJA communicating with this network drive. There it is, the RAID 1 Test S, and there is the RAID 1 Test on S. So we're going to do a standard test here with a one gigabyte file, and we're going to start the test. So again, as expected, we're getting write speeds there that aren't exactly breathtaking. And again, we were to expect this not only because of the slight performance dip of around 10% of using capture recording software, but also because wireless connectivity to a NAS is always slower than that of a Cat6. You have to bear that in mind. Not even a Cat6, just an RJ45 LAN cable connection. So don't think right now that this speed is particularly bad. The one you want to look for is the difference between this speed and what we get with the Wi-Fi 6 adapter. Now, as mentioned, if we play with some of the sizes of the files, some of the formats of the files, we can get greater speeds. But we're going for the average settings here, both now with this adapter and the next adapter. So let's stop that there. And then we're going to do a very quick black magic speed test. And again, one gigabyte file, and we'll make sure that we're using the S drive. There we are, the S drive. Click OK, and we're gonna run a quick speed test there. And once again, uh, Blackmagic is a little bit more of a flexible uh, bit of speed testing there, so the settings it will use will change on the bottom based on each of the tests it chooses to deploy. But again, we're seeing speeds there of around 25 to 35 at the very, very top. So we can average that out at around 30 megabytes per second. And that is using standard A, C, and N wireless adapters on this laptop. But for now, let's move over to the next stage where we're gonna open this laptop up and install our brand new adapter. Let's go. Right, so I've powered down my laptop and it's time to swap out my old wireless adapter with our brand new killer Wi-Fi 6 adapter. So. Again, things will be different depending on your own laptop. For me, I'm going to have to remove this chassis here. And unfortunately, I do not have a removable battery. So it's worth bearing in mind that your device may need you to remove the battery in advance. In the case of this laptop, I'm just going to be very careful not to harm any of those wires and make sure that I reattach the jumpers that this comes with. Now, I am also sorry if the sound quality seems a little bit different right now, and that's largely because of the distance between me and the mic at this point of view. So I apologize in advance if the sound seems a little bit more distant than before. So let's have a quick look. Now, I'm gonna fast forward the screen right now because let's face it, you guys are just watching me remove the base of a laptop that you guys probably don't even own. You just wanna know if this is actually a viable option. So. I'm gonna fast forward the screen and maybe chip in a few comments as I go. Right, so I've installed our brand new adapter in this laptop. I'm sorry about the light settings going a bit mad there. 
Uh, what I'm going to do now is reboot this device and we'll switch back over to the screen recording and then we will do our speed test. Let's hope that driver kicked in first time. Right, so we're back here on the desktop and now we've got our brand new killer Wi-Fi 6 AX uh, adapter installed. As you can see, it's appeared here because we installed the drivers in advance. And if we make our way over to here, we can see that our shared drive has reappeared, although I did have to add it manually once again, but that may have been down to the preemptive shutdown and me not making it a permanent shared folder. And we can read more information about this network adapter by seeing it added here. It's worth adding that it, is, it does also add um, a Bluetooth 5 connection as well with this adapter. But if we go into here, we can see the adapter is functioning. We go into the configuration. We can look into far more advanced options and we can see that AX has been enabled. On top of that, if we make our way into the wireless connection and we go into properties, we can see that we are connected by a Wi-Fi AX, which is lovely to read. But I guess, let's face it, what you guys care about the most right now is seeing those performance speeds. Once again, I'm sorry to keep repeating it, but remember, we are using screen recording software, so that might cut another 10% off the top. But apart from that, let's have a bloody good look now. First and foremost, let's load up AJA. Once again, one gigabyte file, we're using our test folder. Let's click start, and boom, look at that. We are already getting much better speeds, and I think if we weren't already utilizing screen recording software, we would probably be looking at speeds a good, chunk higher maybe 10 15 megs higher but that to me is a great sign that this adapter is working like an absolute charm do bear in mind of course once again that this is using a wireless connection with a nas there is no wired wired connection between me and the nas and i'm achieving read speeds of almost one um 100 uh, bleh, what i should say 100 megabytes and we're getting write speeds <clears throat> that are fairly impressive too. Let's come out of that and go into Black Magic. One gig file. Once again, select the target drive. We're utilizing that S drive again. So let's go into it. Lovely stuff. We're seeing write speeds immediately in the 80s and 90s straight off the bat. And to me, although it is decreasing gradually over time, which is what you find with Black Magic, particularly on mechanical hard drives, this is still an impressive feat, nevertheless and definitely more than double the speeds that we saw over standard AC and N wireless configurations. Now, I'm gonna be doing a bunch more tests. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the video, this is part one of a series of videos where I'm going to be looking at wireless connectivity and NAS. Next, I'm gonna be utilizing USB dongles on a series of different NAS brands to see how they perform against um, wired connections and wireless connections directly with a Wi-Fi dongle. But apart from that, I'm going to say goodbye now. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you find it helpful. And if you are going to buy the Killer 1650 wireless adapter for your laptop, please, please, please help me support this channel and the blog by using the affiliated links in the description. They'll take you to Amazon. They cost you nothing, nothing extra. You won't have changed the price. It doesn't use any of your data. They don't store any cookies. And it helps me get a little kickback from your purchase and supports the channel. And it helps me make these great videos and content for you. Otherwise, click like. If you enjoyed it, click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.